piping my range. We're having technical technical difficulties um, because I'm not in my kitchen. I'm not with my Wi-Fi. Um, and I don't have a tripod. It's like the, the major three reasons why I might have technical difficulties, but that's okay. We are back. Um, Mahi is holding the camera and he's doing it as steady as possible because I don't have a tripod. Mm. But what I do have in front of me is I actually have my collection here of my lemon meringue tarts without the meringue. So I have my lemon curd in there and you know my lemon curd, um, the recipes you can get from um, Bridget's Healthy Christmas cookbook, ebook, cook, ebook cookbook that was released last week. So it's 50 festive recipes, and the ebook has um, including the meringue and how to make these amazing, amazing sweet pastry cases as well. So you get all of that involved in that ebook, and if you want your own copy, it is BridgetsHealthyChristmas.com. Richard's Healthy Christmas is all one word, by the way, so you can get that ebook 100%. What I'm going to teach you guys to do today, and what I tried to do earlier, but we had technical difficulties, is I'm going to teach you guys how to pipe the meringue, because there's a little bit of technique involved. You know, it's not as easy um, as bakeries and pastry chefs make it out to be. There is a little bit of technique, so I'm going to show you that. So the first thing I did, oh, I did it twice now, that's a big, big noise. All right, so in this bowl here, I have the meringue portion of um, the lemon meringue pie or the lemon meringue tarts and basically all I've got in here is I've got egg whites, I have some inulin, I have some monk fruit sweetener, a little bit of vanilla essence and a little bit of apple cider to balance everything off. I whisk it up, whisk it up with my little whisk to make it really really stiff. You know it's really stiff because I'm able to do this. Take the bowl and do that without it falling out. That's how you know, look how stiff that is, right? That is so stiff it's not going to be falling anywhere. That is lovely and stiff. So that's the sort of consistency you're looking for. Of course, the ingredients for this is in the recipe for my lemon meringue tart. So now that we've got this wonderful stiffness, look how keen I am that I can do that and not even worry about it. <laughs> I can do that. So you've got this wonderful stiffness, which means it's going to make it really easy for us to pipe these meringues and have a good height out of our meringues on top of our tarts. So, Taking up my piping bag. Now, um, you may not own a piping bag. That's okay if you don't own a piping bag. Because the other thing that you can actually do is take yourself up a little baggie. Now, this is just that inulin powder. It may look a bit dirty. Take yourself up a little baggie. Fill your bag with the meringue mixture. And then you want to create your own piping bag like that. And then snip off the edge with, with um, some scissors. Just go bing, bing, and snip off the edge. You can do that if you don't own a piping bag. And you can actually make your own piping nozzle with the scissors. Just cut it off there, not too big, because you don't want to, these are small tarts, so you don't want to have too much of a big hole at the end. Just a small little hole there. But because I have my, my piping bag, I also have somewhere, <laughs> where's my piping nozzle? Oh my gosh, I've lost my piping nozzle. Oh, things haven't been good in my kitchen today. Where is my... Everyone's looking for my piping nozzle. Oh my god, where is it? Where is it? Hold on, just, just focus on that, Mahi, while I look for my piping nozzle. Oh, I found it. I found it. Here it is. This is my piping nozzle. See that little hole that I have there in my piping nozzle? Not very big at all. Not very big at all. If I can show you that. Uh, because my tarts are not very big. If I had like a, a whole lemon meringue pie that I was doing, so it was this size, I actually might go for a larger hole, but because I'm just doing it onto tarts and I'm piping onto tarts, I'm going to go for a smaller hole. And yes, you could use a fluted one so you get like lines through it, but I really like the, the straight sort of round version. And all we're going to do is we're going to pop our piping nozzle into our piping bag. Like I said, if you're using the baggie, you don't even have to worry about that. I'm going to show you guys like the chef way, the professional way that we normally do it. And um, I'm folding, you can see me, I'm folding the piping bag over so it sits in my hand like that. See, it's like a little sleeve that I've put or a cuff that's going over my hand. And the reason why I'm doing that is just going to make it so much easier to fill. It doesn't matter if you're doing icing, if you're doing cream, you know, coconut whipped cream, or in our case we're doing meringue. The easiest way to do it is set it over your hand like it's a cuff. 
taken up my spatula. I'm then going to spoon or spatula the, um, the egg white into my piping bag. This is the easiest method. It's really a clean method as well. You don't make a big mess because this can get, can get quite messy. But when you actually have it over your hand like this, it is so easy for you to just turn around and just spatula it into your piping bag. So now that I've done that, I'm going to roll up the top of my piping bag. There's my clean hand, clean hand. And then with my right hand, because I'm right-handed, I'm just beginning to gently push down on the bag. And what's happening now is I'm pushing all that mixture to the front of the tip, which is important so we don't have any air bubbles. Pushing it down, I'm just going to do a practice squirt. Are you ready? Come in close for this, Mahi. There you go, practice squirt. Did you see that? Did you get that? Good. All right. So this, then. Oh, so. Oh my God. My teeth, like, I don't know if anyone else has their teeth. Great. I'm going to lift from now on. So I'm going to start piping on this one here. And I'm going to start piping around the edges. And um, this is good that Mahi's doing this because you guys get a really close up. So applying just a medium pressure, I'm going around the edge. And then I'm going to go a little bit higher. I'm going higher. Here I go. All right, how does that look? Pretty good. Let's do another one. So starting, always start on the edge. Start on the edge. And then we're just going to pipe nice and high. How good does that look? Doesn't that look awesome? It's so good. Start on the edge. It's the same every single time. You start on the edge. And I'm applying the same amount of pressure. I'm not squeezing so hard that it comes up too fast. And I'm just allowing time to make that little wonderful pipe. One more time. Let's do it. All right. So starting on the edges. And we're bringing it in. And we're making that lovely big meringue. So now that we've got these wonderful meringues here, and I'll do these ones after, I'm then going to start to glaze it. Now there's a couple of ways that you could glaze it. You could pop it in the oven there on grill, or if you're in America, on broiler on high. But can I please say, if you pop it into the grill under the oven, watch it so closely. It does not take long to cook through. It's so incredibly quick. You will probably, like, it will take minutes to do so don't walk away like put it under the grill and stand there and wait for it to happen it is that incredibly quick so um you can put it under the grill just the grill on high you know what i reckon put the grill on medium because it might be a little bit better for you guys if you put it on medium it just means that you have a little bit of a leeway it doesn't burn as fast um so you put it under the grill the broiler and it will brown quite nicely but the way that I'm going to show you guys today is I'm actually, I've got, I've got a little bit of a blowtorch here. I don't know how much gas is in there because we ran out of gas, but at least I can show you one on how it works. Are you ready? So with my little blowtorch, all I'm doing, the sugars, even though they're not even like sugar sugar, they're like inulin and monk fruit sweetener, I'm caramelizing the sugar and I'm giving that meringue just the most wonderful caramelized color on top look at that isn't that beautiful just gorgeous and it doesn't take very much to get that wonderful caramelized look on top okay so that one i think i'm about to run out of gas i'll see if i'll get one more out of this the rest i will do under the uh under the grill but i reckon i'll get one more so that, but what you can also do, oh gosh, I squeeze it again, sorry guys, is you can go and just make those definitions of, of the meringue really obvious. Do you see that? Make it real. Oh, look at that. Isn't that stunning? Isn't that gorgeous? So that's all you need to do. That's all you need to do. So remember when it comes to piping, fill your bag halfway. Fill your bag halfway, up to here. Don't fill it up to the top, fill it about halfway. Fold it over your hands, it's so much easier to fill. And then once you've got it, your mixture in, very gently squeeze it down, and that's gonna expel any air bubbles that you might have, 
which means it's going to be a lot easier for you to pipe it onto the tart or pie, whatever it is you're doing. Um, choose a, for tarts, a small circle. Choose a small circle for tarts. If you're making it into a big pie, you could definitely have a larger circle, so you can make a really, really, really big meringue pie. And then you want to either caramelize the top of the tart in the oven, under the grill function or the broiler function, or you want to have one of these little, one of these little, um, these little uh, what do you call them, blow torches? And then you can grill it or you can caramelize it yourself. It doesn't take much as you can see. And you really get the opportunity to see the layering of the wonderful piping work that you've done as well. So it makes it really exciting. So um, this is for anyone who's coming along to our book launch tonight, Sticky Fingers, book launch tonight here in Queensland, Miami Beach. Um, right in the heart of the Gold Coast, we're having this wonderful book launch. For more from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. I will save these guys for you. I will not let my hand touch them. I promise you they will be here when you arrive. So thank you for joining me today. Apologies for our little glitches we had in um, technical glitches, but that's what happens, right, when you're not in your own space. But at the same time, it is a beautiful space, so we're totally okay with it. So thank you for joining me. Hope to see you again really, really soon in Bridget's Kitchen or Bridget's Kitchen for a couple of days, whatever it is. Enjoy your cooking, enjoy your books if you've got some of the books as well. And we'll talk to you really, really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.